Hi everyone, in this video we will go over how to create a simple Docker image then run it in a container. Even though the Docker image we will build is simple, I will go into great detail about how we will build the image, how to run a Docker container, and different Docker CLI commands that are useful in any Docker build. Let us first start with going over Docker. Docker is a platform used to build, share, and run container applications. A Docker image is a read-only template that contains instructions for creating a container. Users can download images from Docker Hub, a repository similar to GitHub. Users can also create their own images. A container is a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. Containers allow developers to create distinct apps that run separate from each other. Docker images can contain a variety of different programs. For example, a complex image can use Ubuntu as its OS, Python for machine learning models, Node.js to execute REST APIs, Nginx as an HTTP server, and Fluent for logging any issues. For this tutorial, our image will be much simpler and will only utilize Python and a slimmed down version of Debian. I am using Visual Studio as my integrated development environment because I find it makes it easy to manage projects. I am currently in my first Docker image directory. First, I am going to create a simple Python script with a single function that returns the square root of a given number. The script prompts a user to type a number that will be input into the square root function. Once I finish writing my script, I am going to save. Next, I am going to create a Docker file. The Docker file contains instructions on how to build and run Docker containers. To create a new file for Docker file, we type Docker file, all one word with a capital D at the beginning. What I need to do first is initialize a build stage and set the base image. We can go online and access Docker Hub to access various Docker images. We can see that we are filtered down to official Docker images, which are some of the best documented, most secure, and most used images on Docker Hub. We are going to search and select Python. We have many different options to choose from. First off, we can see the different Python versions. As of March 2024, we have Python 3.13 and 3.12 as the newest versions. Since 3.13 is in pre-release at this point, I will go with Python 3.12.2. Next, we can choose what underlying operating system we will utilize in our container. The Debian-based OSs available are Buster, which corresponds to Debian 10, Bullseye, which corresponds to Debian 11, and Bookworm, which corresponds to Debian 12. There is also a lightweight OS option, Alpine Linux. I will go with Bookworm for my image. We can further choose if we want a slimmer OS version meaning we can install a Debian version with less packages by choosing an option like Bookworm Slim. In our case, all we are going to do is run a very simple Python script, so I will go with the Slim version. Now we are ready to build our Docker file. I will go back in and open the Docker file. For my first line, I will say from Python colon 3.12.2 slash slim slash bookworm. The from instruction initializes a new build stage and sets the base image. For the next line, I'll write workdir user source app. This sets the working directory for our container. It has become a convention for Docker images to set user source app as the default working directory. Next, we will run copy with two periods, each separated by space. The copy instruction will copy all files in the directory we are working in to the working directory within the container. Finally, we will run the command instruction cmd, then within brackets, python square root pi. The command instruction will be executed when the container starts. In this case, we will run the python square root script we copied into our container. Now that we have our Docker file written, we will build our image and run the Docker container. I'm going to bring up my terminal in VS Code. To build the image, I am going to run docker build t sqroot colon v1. We also have to uh, put a period at the end of sqroot 
v1 to denote that we are building from the current directory. The dash t flag is a flag to tag our image. In this case, the image name is square root. And a lot of times when you are working with Docker, you will version your image. This is the first version, so I tagged it as v1. Now that our Docker image is built, I am going to run the Docker file. Here, I will write docker run dash it sqrot v1. Because I have an input prompt in my Python script, I need to include the interactive tag dash it. If you have a script without any prompts, you can use docker run and then the image name. I have to include the image name as well as the v1 tag to run it. Once I've run it, the container is running within my terminal and I am asked to input a number. I will input nine and then the Python script will return three. We can run it again for 16 and we have the output of four. After we have the number returned, the container will stop running. We can check that no containers are running by running docker ps, which shows all running containers. If we run docker ps-a, this will list all containers, even the ones that are not running. We can see that we have a few different containers that have stopped running. To get rid of these, we can use docker container prune, and this will remove all stopped containers. We are prompted and asked, are we sure that we want to get rid of these? I will say yes. And I will run docker ps-a again to check that all of them are removed. And we can see that they are gone. We can also run a container in detached mode, which will run a container in the background. To do this, we will run docker run dash d dash t square root colon v1. Running docker ps, we will see that the container is currently running. We can run docker exec dash it then the container id followed by bash to run an interactive shell within our container. We can see that we are in the shell. If I run pwd, we can see that we are in the directory we set as the working directory in the Docker file. We can also check the operating system by running cat etsy os release. And we are running Debian 12. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, X, GitHub, Medium, and Odyssey. Thanks again, everyone, for watching and happy coding.